Hey, hello everyone and happy new year. Thanks for joining us for Access City Council. I'm your host, City of Las Vegas Communications Director, David Riggleman. Coming up on this show, we look back at 2018 and let you know what's in store for the new year. And Ward 2 residents get into the holiday spirit. Here to discuss these topics and much more is the councilman who represents Ward 2. You know who it is. It's Mr. Steve Soroka. Welcome back. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, David. It's great to be back. This is the first official work day of 2019 here at City Hall. It's exactly. great to be Exactly, and this is the first official Access City Council show of the new year, too, so here you are. There we are. We're leading the way, <laughs> just awesome. like Ward 2 always does. Exactly, exactly. You know Ward 2 like the back of your hand. If you're not exactly sure where it's located, well, we're going to show you. It's out in the northwest area, basically west of the Rainbow Curve, where the big orange 2 is there. If you live in that area, work in that area, then you are in the city limits of the city of Las Vegas, and of course, you are represented by Councilman Steve Soroka. David, that picture reminds me that War 2 is growing by leaps and bounds. Sure that is. entire area west of the 215. Sure is. Howard Hughes Corporation Summerlin is expanding War 2 by up to 20,000 units homes there, let alone all the commercial businesses, schools, and uh, public safety installations they're putting yeah. in place. It's a growing and a vibrant area. Howard Hughes is very proud of the fact that the whole Summerlin area is now the third most active uh, master plan community in the United States as far as home sales. Wow. So it's up there and again we're seeing the building taking place really died off during the recession but yes. we're getting back to it. Now. You know what's so. nice with all our sports teams coming into town that's an attractive area for a lot of our athletes, coaches and uh, administrators for these sports teams so when you talk to the Golden Knights, the Raiders, the uh, the lights, the, the the aces, they're living out in Ward 2 so <laughs> yeah. it's a good place to be. Yeah exactly yeah. it's your ward. Good that's, for you. right. that's right. Councilman, busy year. 20 2018 was a very, very busy year, and we'll look ahead to 2019, but let's take a quick look back at the year we've just had. You had your hands in a lot of different issues, a lot of things going on. Pet ordinance, this was one that was interesting because the city had an ordinance that said you could not get a pet unless it came from a shelter or a rescue facility, right? Right, right. And the intention of that was great, and the goal was to tackle puppy mills. And agree, nobody likes puppy mills. So we were able to put some guidelines in place, David, that took that actually further, and we were able to hold puppy mills accountable. So if we get a pet in the city of Las Vegas that isn't healthy, isn't bred right, we hold... We get all of our money back and we can send that pet back to the breeder and that breeder then doesn't have, if they want to do business in the city of Las They're Vegas, out. they have to do mm -hmm. business right. Mm -hmm. And we do that through licensing and we do that through the distributors and then we have other requirements that the pet stores have to had to agree to and they did, which is great. But the good news is, David, this, this whole concept got national recognition. Mm -hmm. I was receiving phone calls from around the country saying, you are, you in Las Vegas are a leader in the nation in this area. And when a national organization came to Las Vegas, they gave me an award in the city of Las Vegas award for being pet friendly. So that was quite an honor for uh, one of our first accomplishments here as a Ward 2 office. I think the incentive too for you and the other council members that supported the change was the fact that if you wanted to buy a type of dog, a purebred dog, right. you should have the ability to be able to do that knowing that the dog is going to come from a good breeder, right. not from a puppy mill. Right, we're holding the breeders accountable and you can still get the pet that you want and we still have a vibrant shelter in a, or a community as well where you can get uh, home, homeless pets into your home. Sure, oh that still exists. All that, of that still yeah. exists and we have some work to do absolutely and I loved and I welcome the inputs and help but wow what a great move forward that we have made and further we brought revenue into the community that then we can hire the right code enforcement people to enforce our rules. So we, it was a kind of a win-win-win. We put rules in place that are enforceable and we have the, the revenue to actually enforce them. Yeah. Stuff. It was a great success, and I well, thank you for all the animal activists, animal welfare, and our businesses that all came together in one room and came to agreement. It was a unanimous vote of support. And that was really significant because there were a lot of differences of opinion going into that, but by the end, everybody was on the same sheet of music, and that doesn't happen all that often right. in government. So It was a controversial issue that... At the day of the council vote, there was not a single voice of opposition yep. to what we were doing because they all understood the goodness of it. And, and yes, of course, there's always more we can do. We're willing to do it. Yeah, that was so it, but it was, it was a big win. That yeah. was and it was it was really something. So to I see. want to say thank you to all those groups for working together. They did. They all came together yes, they and did. they all got it. Everybody at the end had an opportunity to weigh in, and it was uh, it was productive. Yes. 
Council, probably the most salient issue for you in 2018, <laughs> open space, uh, badlands, everything associated yes. with. Why don't you give us an update uh, as we uh, as we close out the year and head yeah. into the new one? Well, we have, we're, we're going to do great things moving forward, but what we did with the open space ordinance is we first clarified that there's a difference between empty space in open space. Open space is a planning term. It is a tool that our planning department uses to say this is land set aside into perpetuity for the recreation and the use and enjoyment of the community around it. It's actually a requirement when you're developing a community in the city of Las Vegas that you set aside open space. And all this ordinance says is if you're going to ask the city to reconsider the use of that open space that you follow these steps which says let us know what you're going to do with it up front. Don't make us guess what's going to happen later. Come up front with what you're going to do. And please have an open communication with the neighbors before you walk in and tell us what the neighbors are telling you when you walk in before us. And that's, that's what it says. So we have an opportunity citywide to tackle this problem. The good news, David, is none of that, or almost none of that language was original. We researched across the nation this issue. And this is not a, a Southern Nevada issue or a Las Vegas issue or a Badlands issue. It's a national issue. And there's been university studies done on this issue. There have been master's degree thesis papers written on this issue. And there's ordinance and legislation across the country that we were able to pull from to come up with the best language that suits the city of Las Vegas. But it was a great success. I think, Councilman, one of the reasons that we're seeing it across the country is so many golf courses are closing, yes. and now you've got this, these communities built around the course, and the question is, like at Badlands, what comes next? What's next? That's exactly, and there's ways to do it respectfully and with courtesy for the neighbors and to put a uh, uh, development in place that in the long run we'll all be proud of. There's ways to do that. And so we don't want to do a plan of uh, development at all costs, growth at all costs. No, we want smart development, smart growth. And this uh, ordinance was actually supported by developers that are working closely with the neighborhoods across the community. It was supported and not opposed by the home builders of the community because they saw the goodness of it. And it was also supported by the HOAs of the community. So we had the people most affected by this, this language with it. They were on board with it. They didn't have a problem with the language in this. It was a wonderful success. And we had communities built around open space that are saying, this is exactly what we need. We wish it was even stricter, but it's exactly the direction we need to go to help smart development in our communities that we can be proud of in the long run. All right. And then, Councilman, I know for you, always a salient issue, an important issue. It's at the forefront ever since you've been on the City Council. Veterans issues. Yes. There's a lot of veterans that live in Las Vegas and you have really, not just veterans who are kind of down on their luck or uh, who are having issues, but all veterans, those coming out of the service, trying to find good jobs, taking advantage of the skills they learned while they were in the military. That's, that's a good setup, David. I appreciate that. Because when we think of veterans, what I've learned in my time since leaving the military is most people think of our challenge veterans. Those that are, we see unfortunately homeless on the street, or those that we have one of the highest veteran suicide rates in the nation. We're in the top seven cities in the nation for veteran suicide. But we have other veterans, and the, probably the most ignored group of veterans are those that leave the military with the most education and the most experience. And so I've partnered with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce in hiring our heroes to give those transitioning veterans with master's degrees and uh, bachelor's degrees, even some with PhDs with decades of experience to transition to work in our businesses in our community. There's a three month program, there's a six month program, free of charge for the business. Yeah, they get a, a quality uh, yeah. person. Because what we're finding is that our veterans, once they get their foot in the door, employers are going, wow, I had no idea our military people were trained to this level. So the challenge is getting the foot in the door. And unfortunately, so few, well, fortunately or unfortunately, depending how you look at it, so few people in our community have served, and it's a national problem. Only 2% of Americans have worn the uniform in the last generation. So the chances of a veteran speaking to a veteran at, uh, when they're interviewing for a job are slim. So these programs that we're talking about give them an opportunity, risk-free for a business to go, wow, let me check out one of these veterans. It's a good deal. It's yeah. a good deal. It's it, Basically, <laughs> you're kicking the tires, if you will, on this employee right. with no obligation you're not even having to pay 
If you like the person, great, you hire them on. If you don't, you can bring somebody else in and, and try them out then too. So, And in our effort to not only retain veterans, but attract veterans to the state of Nevada, I'm working with several organizations in the uh, city, the community, and the state. So working within the city, we're putting together a veterans coalition. And working through the mayor's fund, we're working with Cedric, Councilman Cedric Creer to develop a veterans plaza in town that provides the services that when you leave the military, you no longer have access to, such as ability to start a business, the education that you need to be a better represent yourself as you go forth to get a job in the community. So these are role, uh, opportunities for our colonels when they leave the military, our lieutenant colonels, our senior master sergeants, our master sergeants, our senior NCOs, people ready to contribute to our community can come here, get a little more integration into the community because it's a cultural change. Mm -hmm. So we're working to uh, provide those opportunities in our community to become better part of our community. Further, I was able to help one of our uh, youth at the Nellis Air Force Base. We have rules in our city, that in our community with Clark County School District for a reason to, to help protect the integrity of our schools, help the integrity of our sports teams, and then military people move into town and some of those rules don't really directly apply. So I was, I was able to work with the superintendent of schools, the, the boss of the NIAA to help highlight one of those issues for a senior in high school who moved here this summer to be able to play on a sports team where he would otherwise have been ineligible to play. But because he was in the military and had no choice to move here or not, he had no choice where they lived, we were able to uh, work with the school system to get him approval to try out for his, the basketball team. And he actually made the team and is playing now, but we're taking that same concept to the legislature now to help advocate for our veterans and our military families to have a welcome place in the city of Na Nevada rather than being told, hey, you're new here, you can't play. Well, wait a minute, I'm supporting our nation, I'm de defending mm -hmm. our nation, I, I love our community here and we want to be part of it. So we just have some uh, small small bumps to overcome along those yeah. road, those lines. So look, looking forward to helping Plugging our veterans. Away. Plugging away. Our military spouses have challenges because their resumes are not, they don't look like everybody else's because they move around so much and there may be even periods of break uh, in, in their employment. And that sends a red flag up to many in HR. Mm -hmm. So if we bring awareness, of, hey, this military spouse is actually a pretty capable person. We may want to consider them for your, for your job here. So we're trying to highlight some of these issues uh, for our businesses in our community. Staff update. You got some changes in your office this we year. We do. Yeah. We do. We have a, a, we had a great team before. We have an even better team now. I have a team of three. So if you call our office and you get somebody new on the phone, it could be uh, Jordan Sandecki, who's my new chief of staff. I stole her from the city of Las Vegas' admin team and put her on my team. <laughs> and uh, the city of Las Vegas is uh, sad for that, but they're glad that she's still helping out in our community. So you'll talk to Jordan on the phone. We're, she's actually been highlighted as a superstar. She's on, been through what's called SEAL training for the city of Las Vegas. Only our most promising uh, uh, folks get to get to that training, and we're going to send her to supervisor school to make her even more uh, marketable in the future. And then we have Meredith Leary. Stole her from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce hiring our heroes program I say stole tongue-in-cheek <laughs> she had already uh, left uh, hiring our heroes but then she called me up one day and said I would love to continue to work with you and brought her on board with the team so we she were, was guest on one of our shows she was a guest on our yeah. show yeah. so that. we were partnering with hiring our heroes and now I, she's on the team here so you may be talking to Meredy or Jordan but of course there's Joe everybody yeah, uh, the everybody rock. really Joe's likes the Joe yeah, he's yeah. the rock Joe Volmar uh, he's he's who you primarily <laughs> talk to on the phone and he, he, he really makes us all look good. So we have a team of three, so you, it's a great staff. And one of the other pillars I didn't get to talk about yet, David, I didn't want to be remiss, is public safety. And that's a very important pillar for our office. And I've been able to work closely this past year with our Metro Police Department and our Fire Department, as well as our Animal Control and our Marshals to not only increase their uh, revenue sources so they can increase their numbers to be available on our streets, but I've been able to help with their policies and their visibility and let them know that they have a community in Ward 2 that mm -hmm. welcomes right. them. In our community, in our nation right now, there can be so much animosity between our, our uh, public safety officials and the community, and I know we don't have that in, our, in Las Vegas, and so I, we have teamed together to make sure our community really knows that our police, fire, marshals, and animal control are, are our friends. 
And so they, I bring them to all of our events. You get to see them at our coffees with the councilmen. You get to see them at our uh, community events that we do. And they bring their toys that everybody gets to play with as excellent, well. Excellent, excellent. And councilman, real quickly too, nightclub ordinance. Uh, you're working on a nightclub oh, yeah. ordinance. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we were able to work on that and we put it in place and it, it was successful because what was interesting was our restaurants. If they brought entertainment in and if you just even had a three foot dance floor, it, legally they would have to become a nightclub mm -hmm. and the restaurant owners came to me and said you know we don't think that that's really what we're trying to right. do we're a, far, a long way from a night we're a yeah, long yeah, way from yeah, a nightclub yeah. we just want our, our patrons to have a little opportunity to dance while they're waiting for their meal or dance off a little bit of their dessert at the end before they go home and it, and they've highlighted that to me and we were able to put language in place and working with some of the other council members as well that allows our restaurants across the city to have a little entertainment and a little dance floor out there without having to go through the vetting process of a nightclub which it costs a lot of money oh, yeah. and it takes a lot of time and that's for a good reason we need that nightclub ordinance but this amendment to, to our current existing restaurant uh, licensing is just a little more flexible to people who aren't yeah. really nightclubs yeah right. and people were you know we were doing that as a city anyway, but this makes it legal, makes the owners feel a lot more comfortable about doing business. All right, good stuff. Yeah. A lot good going stuff. on in oh, yeah. 2019, 18 yeah. leading into 2019. It's great. And that's the best part of the job, Dave, is helping our community. So well, a lot of fun. speaking of which, I love this. Uh, you posted this on Facebook. You said, having a great time today with Musicology Academy, visiting our assisted living centers in Ward 2, spreading some holiday cheer. This is a little tradition that you guys have started, isn't it? It is. We do this twice a year now. We go to our senior living facilities in Ward 2, and we have this group that they're just talented musicians. They just do this. They're not from one school. They're from a variety of schools. They're from seventh grade all the way through co in wow. college, and they get together, and we, in on the 4th of July time frame, we... Uh, we have them come sing, sing patriotic songs oh. to bring the patriotic feeling of the season. And at the holiday time, we make the same uh, rounds with the uh, facilities and we sing holiday songs. And the, the it's a nice tradition. They actually look yeah. forward to it sure. now that they know it's coming. And the kids are great and they're really entertaining and personable. And, <laughs> and they don't just sing, they interact with all the, both the staff and the members. That's great. Of these, That's uh, great. Facilities. And you have quite a few uh, assisted living facilities in your ward, don't yeah, you? We have at least six and we yeah. have more that we're getting, trying to get yep. in our tour. Yeah. Yes. All right. Good stuff. And along those same lines, uh, you also posted this on Facebook. I loved it. You said, thank you to my wife, Nancy, and her friends for helping fill my car with toys for Operation Warm Heart. It was great to see so many of my peers. And this is, tell us every, tell everybody about this program, Councilman. It's a great one. Well, my wife is Nancy, just in case <laughs> yeah. everybody's wondering. But uh, she helped round up toys. And this program is with the Civil Military Affairs Council at Nellis Air Force Base. And they put the word out to the community at the holiday time to help our challenge veterans. Our veterans don't make our military active duty, don't make a lot of like money. So if they have a family of any size, they can be challenged to provide the quality gifts yeah. for their children. And the community chips in greatly. And we were able to, uh, <laughs> through the goodness of War II, bring a lot of gifts to put around that tree for the kids of uh, Nellis Air So do the kids make up a wish list uh, and then you guys help fill that? Or how does that work? Well, they can. They do fill out a wish list, but like all wish lists, then they don't necessarily get what they ask for. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of life in yeah. general, right? <laughs> isn't it? So yeah. they get something good, obviously. Those were good things that we saw. They in the really appreciate the it. The feedback so. is amazing. And, and it was members of our leadership of the all of the Southern Nevada, so the, all the municipalities of Southern Nevada contributed as well. Yeah, good stuff. It's a great tradition. And speaking of traditions, one that goes back many years in your ward, you posted this on Facebook as well. We're out at the lakes tonight for Festival of Lights. Come out and watch the boat parade and get your picture with Santa. This is a wonderful event. If you've never taken part in this uh, over the years, folks, you, you got to get out and see it because there's all kinds of festivities. Uh, it culminates with the, the parade of the boats out there on the lake. So it's good stuff. Festival of Lights, the boat parade, the lights in the, in the area, entertainment that goes on. The photo that you saw is with the real Santa. He had to fly back to the North Pole <laughs> after the event, but he was there. And the photo you saw is with the new staff. So those are that's every, how, what everybody looks like. Both Meredith and Jordan, by the way, are military and veteran spouses. Oh, so I didn't we, know that. Yeah, I didn't so, know that. So I have a team that uh, is living the, li living the life and living the words that we say in Ward 2. I got to welcome all the guests that were there for the uh, for the boat parade. And there are the boats. The, there's the boats and the uh, we're told by the neighbors that because the sound travels across the lake so well that they could sit in their backyard and actually hear all the narration for really? the boat parade. Really? Yeah, it's not incredible. bad. Oh, and I, I, I don't let, have to mention 
that Vince Barrett and I narrate this parade. Mm. And we got called recently that the Macy's Day Parade and <laughs> Thanksgiving in New York yes. had us on the short list for sure. uh, emceeing sure. their parade next year. The boat, uh, the yeah. festival lights is often, is often a springboard to the Macy's. Uh, Macy's off, it is yeah, often, yeah, yeah. often yeah. Yeah. But that's just what I heard. I don't know if it's actually <laughs> happening. You know, somebody just told me that. Well, yeah. good stuff. Always good. Uh, boats, they've been doing that for a while, but they always look great every year. And somebody always yeah. comes up with a new design or two uh, to throw into the mix. So. And we even had a, a, somebody, a boat crasher, a parade crasher this year at the end, came without any lights and, and was in the parade. Next year, they said they're going to sign up officially. So we're getting even more boats in the parade. <laughs> yeah. So it was a lot of fun. Spring for some lights. That's always go. important. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Councilman, this is great. You had a holiday mingle here at City Hall. This is back on December 3rd. Kind of a community get together here at City Hall. Good stuff. It's become my favorite event. We do that right on the patio here, the deck of the new City Hall. It's a beautiful building we have and a beautiful uh, deck. We have heat lamps in the back and we have an inside portion. But the best part, beside from the, the free food and the free <laughs> drinks, is the, the opportunity to mingle and talk with other people of the community without any other obligation. Mm -hmm. You're not being asked to do anything. You're not being asked to fund anything. You just come. The whole purpose is to just celebrate the city and learn uh, from other people in the community, they're doing great things. And we had a great t double the turnout this year from last year, and we expect it to continue to grow. That's great. It's a That's lot great. Of fun. Yeah, look at that spread. It makes you want to just come out and uh, chat with people. City Hall's a great venue for that. Like I say, Councilman, you can be inside, outside. We had heat lamps going. It was it was a nice get together. So. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Great members of the community, people from the uh, the Chinese uh, community were there. People from uh, the Veteran Small Business yeah. of the Year, Blue Air Training were there. So you get to see a spectrum of uh, business and business owners. And choir there, nice. We brought a choir in from uh, the high schools, so the high schools get to have an opportunity to show off their talent from the crowd, and those are members of. Uh, uh, Ward 2 that you just saw there in a beautiful uh, layout by uh, our staff here. You get to see them show off what their capability are here yeah. is here. Good at, stuff. Uh, at it's a nice City event. Hall. Yeah. It's a very nice event. It's very warm and just welcoming. It is good. Good all the way around. And Councilman, uh, you always have uh, coffee with the Councilman. These are great. Uh, the last one was on November 29th at the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. This is really great. We want to let people know that you have these. It's a very informal way to just talk with you about issues going on in the ward, right? It, absolutely. And at this last one at this event venue right here, and you'll see a photo of me, a video clip of me talking to a member of one of our HOAs that had a little bit of misinformation about an item coming up for vote. And when, through the course of the conversation, I was able to clarify uh, what we were actually voting on. They said, oh, that changes our community's entire right. position on that issue. I welcome you to come out to learn that, but also I welcome you to come out and change my view yeah. or my understanding of where the community stands on, uh, on the items we're coming up to vote, because I'm here to represent you. The positions I take are developed by communicating with all the members of Ward 2, so this is a great opportunity to share with me what your concerns are so I can represent them most accurately when we're voting on items. And we have some big ones coming up, David. We have short-term rentals coming up. Uh, we have rules on uh, social use venues for marijuana coming up. Yeah. We have marijuana dispensaries being considered for right. Ward 2. So we have all these issues big that issues. I would love and I ask the community to come out and share with me what you what you think about yeah. those things so I can represent your views on them. And if there's things I, I can clarify for your understanding of our code and our uh, rules when we are developing policies, I'm happy to do that. Likewise, please clarify misunderstandings I have about uh, uh, the issues as well. Sure. I'm really open to that and I welcome that. And there was great success this last coffee and I'm using that to say please come out and uh, chat at yeah. our coffees with the council. We'll have those on, on the city's website on we your do. page about when the next ones are. You can always come out and again, very informal. Just uh, you can chat with the councilman uh, over a cup of coffee, talk with the staff members, uh, as opposed to having to come down to City Hall and you know go through all of that. And they're always held at a coffee house in Ward Two. We yeah. like to highlight the Ward Two businesses. Close and, to your close to your constituents. Yes, sir. And I like coffee, so it will be over a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'll have a cup of coffee in my hand, so we'll be talking over coffee. Another another big event in your ward, all across the city, are our shredding events. All right. Uh, you know, people really understand that identity theft is a bad thing because you can see by the turnout at these, it's incredible, all the people bring old documents, et cetera, that, that need to be shredded and you have the people lined up for <laughs> for blocks on this. They was really come out in droves. So it's a great opportunity and I get to meet and speak with them. And pe some people come to use this as a coffee with a councilman almost. They sure, just to talk, talk with, with you. Me yeah, exactly. And pull me over, over to the side. And this last time we were able to take our uh, 
we, we are very concerned about opioid addiction in mm -hmm. our community. And we know opioids are a gateway drug to heroin. Yeah, sure are. Because heroin's cheaper than our opioids. So when our, and often our youth in high school get hooked on opioids from sporting injuries. Yep, they get injured, right? Mm -hmm. And they end up on heroin. So one way to uh, help prevent that is to get rid of prescription drugs in your home. And we at this last coffee with our last writing event had a packet from Mellencrop that what you do is you put your prescription drugs up to 45 pills into a pouch and you fill it with six ounces of water and it takes just gets rid, yeah. neutralizes the uh, prescription drug. And you can actually throw it into the trash. It can go into the landfill mm -hmm. then without uh, hurting our, our ecosystem. It's a great idea. Great and idea. what a great product, and we, we love to advocate for that. And so it's a way not only to clear out your medicine cabinet, but protect our environment as Good well. Good stuff. And then you have another shredding event coming up in the near future, do you know? We do. It's, uh, let's see, they wrote it down on my calendar. I think it's in March that we're coming up for our next uh, shredding event. And we'll have it on your website. We'll have uh, it on too. the website. Yep. We'll announce it at the end of season. City, uh, council meetings yep. and we'll probably have another chance here to talk about it again yeah on this show absolutely yeah. so but I'm finding I'm there's so we covered so many we, we did we did so much this past year it's incredible and I give credit to my staff for keeping the calendar and keeping it straight so we it takes a team to be able to yep. hop from event to event to different topic different topic but they know my priorities you know and my priorities continue to be number one be the voice of the people it's not about me and I shared that during my campaign and that's something that a military leadership is, teaches you it's not about you it's about serving your neighbors it's about serving your community and at the in the military it's about serving the nation but here it's serving the city of Las Vegas as a whole and it's every every day is a great day to be a Las Vegan but that's the number one is to be the voice of the people. I will continue to stand up and protect our, our neighborhoods, our property values, and our quality of life in our community. And that covers a lot of ground, but that's uh, one of my two, those are two of my four priorities. Number three is public safety, which includes police, fire, animal uh, control, code enforcement, and our marshals. And that's an important element of our community. And last are our veterans. So we have four pillars that we are striving every day to make sure that we are when we schedule my calendar that it is fulfilling one of those areas first that's our priorities here for our uh, people of ward two all right it's gonna be a busy year <laughs> it's a busy year ahead we have a few things going on that carry over from the past sure but it's been really great and people say do you still like it? i go I love it uh, is it like the military? Actually, it's a lot like being in the Pentagon, David, mm -hmm. when you're fighting for the people of your uh, community. Uh, but most of all, it's a lot like being a military commander where everything you do is you get to knock down walls and go through barriers to provide your community, your people, the tools they need to have a, a great life every day. And uh, the best part of it is I do get to help people every day. All right. And uh, it's a 24-7 job. So... Uh, Please say hi, and uh, my family supports me in this, and I couldn't do it without them or my staff. It'll make it easier for them to, to connect with you, too. Yeah. We always want to hear from you, so if you have something you'd like to share with Councilman Soroka, you can always find him on Facebook and Twitter, as you saw earlier. And by the way, if you leave a comment, we may use your post on our next show. You can also contact the Councilman just by picking up the phone, 702-229-2144. You can shoot him an email. His address is ward2 at lasvegasnevada.gov, and they'll get back to you. You guys always do. We, we do, and 2019 is going to be a big year. It is. It's a lot fun. going on, and uh, here we go. We're here off we and go. running already. There so. we go. So thanks so much. Really appreciate what you do here for, uh, for oh, us. Thanks so much, Councilman. Thank Good you luck did. to you in, in the new year, thank all the way you around to your, into your staff as well. And we want to thank you for joining us for this edition of Access City Council. Don't miss our next show beginning January 17th with Ward 5 City Councilman Cedric Creer. You can catch all of our KCLV shows on Apple TV, Roku, Hulu, and Amazon Fire now. And don't forget, you can also watch us live on the Internet at KCLV.TV. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time around.